I'm Amelie Zilber, and I am on my way to meet an expert who's going to help with something that's been bothering me lately. How do you communicate with people who aren't willing to hear us? I just landed in Santa Cruz, and we're gonna go talk to him. Charles Duhigg is the author of The Power of Habit and Super Communicators, and he's a writer at The New Yorker. He's an expert on understanding communication, so I'm going to see if he can provide me with insight on how to approach these tense conversations. So, in your book, there were different kinds of conversations. How would someone be able to identify what kind of conversation they're having? It's a really good question because we usually think of a discussion as being about one thing, right. but there's actually multiple conversations going on every time we talk to someone. Mm -hmm. and, and most of them fall into one of three buckets. Most of them are usually, there's practical conversations, like I wanna fix your problem, or let's talk right. about our plans for next week. There's emotional conversations, mm -hmm. right? I wanna tell you how I feel, right. and I don't want you to solve my problem. Right. <laughs> I want you just to listen. And yeah. then there's social conversations about how we relate to each other and we relate to people outside of ourselves. And one of the best things that we can do to try and figure out what kind of conversation is happening right now is to ask questions. So how would you determine what kind of question would lead you to understanding what kind of conversation you're having? So one of the things that we know from studies is really powerful is to ask what are known as deep questions. And a deep question is something that asks about someone's beliefs, their values, or their experiences. Okay. So take, for instance, I could ask you, where do you live right now? But a better thing to say is something like, What's your favorite thing about where you live right now? Mm. What would you say if I asked you what's your favorite thing about living in New York right now? I think the community of New York is much more connected than in Los Angeles. Yeah. See, what I love about that answer is you just told me so much about yourself. You love community, that this is yeah. something that's important to you. Yeah. And then it would be very natural for me to say, oh my gosh, you know what, I grew up in Albuquerque and I totally understand because when I grew up, it was a place that, that had a community that I felt excluded from. Oh, and now we're having a real conversation. Yeah. Right? Now we're actually getting deep with each other. Right. And that's what connection really is. Incredible. How do the different kinds of conversations affect how we communicate. In ways that are pretty subtle, but once you've learned to look for them, they're pretty easy to see. Okay. So if you're talking to someone and you ask them, for instance, how was this weekend? And they say, oh, it was great. I got a bunch of chores done. Well, that person's probably in a practical frame of mind, right? Then I can say, okay, thanks for coming to the meeting. We're gonna get down to doing the budget now. Right. But if I said to you, how was your weekend? And you said something like, oh man, like I went to my kid's graduation and it was amazing. At that point, you're signaling to me that you are open, that you want to talk about something that's more emotional. Right. And if I engage with you, if I match you and I say, oh, like tell me about how you felt when you watched your kid walk across that stage. Those are things that allow me to tell you, I wanna match you. Mm. And they are inviting you to match me so that we start talking about the same things, having the same kind of conversation at the same moment. Right. Which is how we feel connected. I've been having my own kind of communication problem, mostly related to confrontation. And mm. I often notice that when I'm in confrontation or I'm in a fight, I freeze up, especially if the opposite in my conversation is showing signs of hostility or raising their voice. And I would love some advice on how to communicate with someone who maybe isn't willing to hear us. That sounds like a tough position to be in. Oftentimes the way that we convince someone else to listen to us is by proving to them that we're listening to them. There's this technique called looping for understanding. It has three steps, right? You ask a question, you repeat back in your own words what the person just said, mm -hmm. and then you ask them if you got it right. So let me ask you, when, when you were talking to this person, if you had taken a moment and you had said, I wanna tell you what I hear you saying, and tried your best to, yeah. to really capture what they've said, and then said, am I getting that right? Like, do I understand you? Do you think that would have helped? Absolutely. I think that definitely would have helped. I think an important piece of the conversation to acknowledge is the conversation is aggressive because I'm being blamed for something I don't feel like I did. Right. Do you have any advice for possibly not wanting to re-verbalize what they have said if it's a defamation of your character? Or traumatic or... somehow. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So oftentimes when someone says, I'm angry at you because you didn't close the windows. Yeah. What we can say back is we can say, look, what I hear you saying is you're upset. Mm -hmm. And it seems like maybe you feel like we don't have enough respect for each other and our needs in this relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, am I getting that right? Because the goal really is to understand why they're actually so angry. And it's not about the window. Right. Right. It's not about <laughs> leaving dishes in the sink. Right. It's about something deeper. And, right. and if we take a beat and we think about what it is and then we verbalize it, oftentimes the other person says, yeah, I think you're hearing me because it feels so good to be heard. Yeah. 
And then what happens is, and this is hardwired into our brains, they will want to listen to you. Mm. And there's a second thing you can do at this point, okay. which is you can ask permission to tell them your own perspective. And when we ask permission, if we say, look, I understand you're upset about the window. Can I tell you from my perspective, like why I left it open? And you wait, they're gonna say yes, right? Because <laughs> they know that it's rude not to. Yeah. Now they're ready to hear you. Now they're less defensive because you've sought their permission to share with them. Yeah. The other thing I would say, and I think this is essential, is to remember each of us have an authentic right to be heard. Absolutely. So when you say, look, from my perspective, let me tell you, I care deeply about this issue because of something that happened two years ago. Sharing that anecdote, sharing that personal aspect of ourselves mm -hmm. often disarms the other person totally. and causes them to feel a little bit of empathy. I think that's a really wonderful piece of advice that I will take with me moving forward. Oh, good. How would you encourage people to take this information with an open heart and open mind. We all want to connect. Of course, yeah. And that's because communication is human superpower. Now there's some people who can be super communicators for anyone. They can mm. do this on a more consistent basis. And it's not because they're smarter or more charismatic. It's just because they've thought a little bit deeper about mm. how to communicate and how to connect. Can anyone be a super communicator? Anyone. It's just a set of skills any of us can learn. If you ask these deep questions, if you loop for understanding mm. to show that you're listening, yeah. if you share who you are, and when someone is sharing with you, mm. you match that sharing, you yeah. acknowledge it and you welcome it, then all of us can become super communicators. You've obviously done your research and now written an entire book. Do you feel as confident as you appear to be in how to communicate? <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good question. No, I, I feel like I get communication wrong all the time. I think that's totally natural. I think the thing that I've learned to do in writing this book is to want to try to be better, to want to show people that I want to connect with them. Yeah. And that's at the heart of how we actually connect. In listening to Super Communicators, I really loved the chapter on astronauts oh, thank and how you. they pick their astronauts off of laughter, which is one of my favorite activities to do, is just constantly <laughs> laugh. So yeah, I'd love for you to dive in a little Absolutely. bit more there. So a couple of years ago, um, in the 1980s, NASA was trying to find astronauts who had high emotional intelligence. The problem is that when they would interview candidates, Everyone faked it really, really well. They knew exactly what to say. Right. So one of the psychologists, he would drop his papers as if on accident. Mm -hmm. And then he would start laughing about it really big. And he would pay attention to see if the astronaut matched mm -hmm. his laughter or if they just politely chuckled a little bit. Because people who respond to our invitations, those are people who have emotional IQ. Mm. They are showing us that they want to connect with us. Mm. So I have a question. Sure. What kind of conversation are we having right now? <laughs> well, that's a good, let me ask <laughs> you. What, what, what kind of conversation do you think we're having? Obviously, a learning conversation. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but there's emotional, practical. Yeah. And then was the third learning? Social. Or, or social. Social, yeah. So I think at various points, we were focusing on emotional issues. Yeah. And, and then we were focusing on some practical things, mm -hmm. right? Like how do we actually apply this? And then we were talking about other people, which is a social conversation. How do we relate yeah. to people in our lives? Mm -hmm. So do you feel like this has been helpful? Like, do you feel like you have advice that'll help you with these, with your next conversation? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I have tools that are really practical to use in my everyday life and even in moments that don't happen every day, like a fight or an argument. And it's clear that you have a lot of empathy. Oh, that's nice. And that you care about <laughs> other people and you're probably a great friend. Thank you so much for this incredible conversation. Thank you, this has been such a delight. If you wanna dive deeper into communication, check out Super Communicators now on Audible.